Hi everyone, welcome to this video for the 27th weekend uh, since lockdown in the UK, 27 weeks ago, wow. Uh, today it is very windy, which is probably my most annoying type of weather, but this is a fairly recent thing since, um, uh, only really since I've had uh, numerous antennas in the back garden. Now, uh, I'm sort of fortunate really, because everything out there is basically made of uh, fiberglass, apart from my telescopic aluminium rod, which is supporting my Diamond X300, which is leaning slightly, but not moving. Everything else is swaying in the wind and, uh, and touch wood with no chance of it uh, falling over. However, it is still annoying to see all my antennas moving around like this in the wind. You probably can't make out the actual wire on my end fed, but it, rather than being taught to straight across the garden, it's literally, moving, swaying backwards and forwards in an arc, really, um, from that supporting rod at the bottom of the garden as it makes its way up towards the house. And as a consequence of that, my uh, SWR is moving around a bit, but um, uh, it's not moving around very much, probably, just, uh, well, I've just been looking at it, sort of 1 to 1.1 to 1.1 to 1.3, uh, not not the such that would make a big difference, um, but uh, it just, well, I don't suppose, I, it, I was about to say, it feels as if it's a lot windier these days than it used to be, but that's because um, before uh, uh, I had any wire antennas up on a sort of permanent basis, when I was only using a Welbrook loop, which at my old QTH was basically just sat in the shed, uh, you don't think about windy days at all, really. Um, but you do when uh, when you've got antennas up. Uh, and interestingly, my friend, uh, Jeff, M0UHF, he, t he texted me actually yesterday, uh, and I spoke to him yesterday, and the first thing he said to me was, tomorrow afternoon is going to be really windy, so uh, probably make sure you're at home and just to keep tabs on everything. So uh, um, I was out earlier, but uh, I'm back now and I'm keeping tabs on everything and um, I'm watching all this stuff blowing around in the wind and it's just really basically annoying me. There you go, look at that. Um, so yeah, so I, I haven't actually looked at the weather today, so I don't know how long this kind of, these windy conditions are going to remain. We've got the um, SCED tonight, the Harwell ARS uh, Friday night SCED on, uh, on top band and 80 meters. Uh, and if conditions are like this, it's gonna make it a bit interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, my antenna literally is is meters out of position when the wind blows quite strongly, uh, and I don't know what's happened, but um, it's, it's it looks quite a bit closer now to the well, it is because it, because the wind's blowing it sort of left to right across the uh, across the screen that you're watching, which um, is roughly north to south. Uh, the actual the conductor on my end fed wire is is, is a lot closer to the uh, G5RV. Now I've got that they couple anyway. I'm sure uh, I, I've got the G5RV disconnected anyway, but it will still have an effect um, when that when that wire is taut. They they don't actually cross paths. They do, but they are quite close at the end. So uh, no doubt that well that certainly could have uh, an effect on. Um, uh, on how I'm heard later on. Uh, I'm just gonna actually take a wander out there. Brave it. It's still warm actually. Um, it's a bit, it's just slightly chilly in the shade, but the sun's out and the sun is quite warm. I was only reading the other day actually, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm becoming sort of obsessed with the weather. And um, I, I, I was trying to, I remember years ago, when my eldest daughter was probably, I don't know, eight or nine, seven, eight, nine, um, we were flying a kite in a field um, in West Oxfordshire. And it was middle of October and it was like very bright and sunny and warm like a summer's day. And that was sort of mid-October. And I, I, was, I was looking um, on the internet the other day and um, the highest recorded temperature in October is, was 29 point something degrees in the UK. I mean, that well, they were cheating because that was actually, uh, it, it was, it was, 1985 on October the 1st so uh, only just October but still best part of 30 degrees oh here we go we like a bit of air, aircraft action that 
looks military, but I'm not sure. There you go. So, um, so yeah, so it's still a, a warm day in the sun, perfectly warm. Um, but uh, yeah, very, um, very blowy conditions to, uh, to say the least. And uh, so it'll be, yeah, like I said, it'll be interesting to, uh, to see how well I'm heard later on on the sked because that is the important thing, of course. Um, but yeah, very, very bright indeed. Um, so this weekend, um, various things going on in the shack, as per usual. And um, I think we'll start with the uh, FT817. I was, um, I'll tell you what, I'm not being funny, but it's actually, a, it's, it's quite a nice radio for listening to broadcast um, uh, programs, broadcast stations. This is Radio 4 on FM, in wide FM. The rind or something that you know the, the perfect time to pick. Well, it's very important that they do get themselves perfectly seasoned, if you like, so that the skin is really nice and hard. And it's fine that the The audio output is one watt, but it's very good quality. Oh, for quite a long time until I think the frosts are about to start. And then I'll cut the... I mean, that's perfectly listenable to. Um, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, for such a small radio, I mean, the thing's tiny. Um, but, yeah, listening on sort of AM, and particularly FM, um, the, the, the audio quality is really superb. I plugged um, my Bose uh, SoundLink 2 into it the other day and, and recorded some hands... Uh, speaking and um, yeah it sounded really really nice I've got to say it did sound really nice indeed um, so yeah it's uh and uh, well the, and the other day actually uh, well a couple of nights ago I, I had it I, I, I well I unplugged the uh, the mic to avoid well just for in case of, of uh, accidentally pressing it I plugged my Wellbrook loop into it and I copied um, really superb signal from Radio Club de Para in Brazil, but also a, a nice signal from Radio Tama in Peru and a Radio Verdach from Guatemala uh, on this little radio uh, with a Welbert loop. And I, I, I'm sort of, I'll, do a, I'll do a separate video on that, but um, and I've got the recordings, I'll upload them, but uh, I, I, I think this could be uh, a contender for uh, one of the best, you know, sort of ultra portable radios for sort of DXing shortwave um never really considered it in that way before i also copied actually um vocm on 590 kilohertz on medium wave and uh what else did i copy uh, i copied puerto rico on 1660 and i copied um grenada on 1400 kilohertz using it i mean literally and uh yeah but you know obviously it, uh, it, I, I was using SSB on um, on medium wave, but really good little radio. And I'm going to be pra I'm going to be um, one of the things I'm doing this weekend is I'm going to be sort of using this radio. Um, I'm going to do a bit more DXing with it. But what I'm also going to try to do is, is sort of put a kind of kit together for um, when I'm sort of travelling in the UK because the, the the main purpose of this radio was not to listen to Radio Four. Out there helping sometimes my mum, and they all used to come out. It was actually to um, to go portable. And, um, and a sort of kit is kind of taking shape, um, although uh, it might not be exactly to, to everyone's sort of taste. Um, inside the radio right now, I've got the, the, the AA alkaline battery tray, and so it's basically running on Duracells right now. But um, the wiring for that, for, that, for that tray is different to the wiring for a nickel metal hydride, well, originally NICAD, but now uh, nickel metal hydride sort of replacement battery pack. So um, when you plug the a main supply into it, it's clever enough to know that, that it, it, it's not to charge those batteries. Um, but when I put this into it, it, it will charge it. And um, I, I've already bought the uh, power pole to kind of protect the, uh, the circuit board inside that the, the uh, mains adapter socket uh, is, is, is attached to. But in terms of a kit for traveling, I mean, the obvious thing is to set something up that would fit into, um, well, I've got four of them 
I've got four flight cases of various sizes, but uh, probably one of the bigger ones. So when I'm traveling in the UK, um, I don't think I'm gonna be going anywhere internationally for quite a long time, then um, all bases should be covered. So obviously put the uh, NIMH battery into it for uh, operating it portably or ultra portably. And I bought this charger uh, on eBay and without thinking, um, just sort of plugged it into the radio. And uh, of course, on HF, it's a, it's a cheap Chinese switch mode power supply. Very, very noisy on HF, unusable for listening uh, uh, or transmitting. Um, but fine if you just want to, if you're listening to VHF or UHF, not a problem at all. But, but the bottom line is, is that this power supply can be used to charge this battery pack. Um, so it's, and for 11.99, um, it, it's still money well spent. So that's part of the kit um, because there are going to be occasions when I'm just going to want to take the radio with that battery and use it for, you know, well, for example, if I went portable on one of our skeds on Friday night, I'm going to be listening for an hour and a half and transmitting probably for, to for a total of about probably not even 10 minutes. So, you know, that would be fine. Uh, and for longer use, I've got this lead acid battery, sealed lead acid battery that I got from Maplin um two or three years ago it's literally been recharged once um so it's in perfect nick um i bought it at the same time as this battery charger which also came from uh, map play and bought them at the same time so if i want to go away and use the radio for um, i don't know from a lodge or hotel room or whatever uh, obviously i've got to avoid running it on mains then um i can just keep this battery charged and, and run it off that there are better options you know, there are these external lithium polymer batteries that are much lighter. You get the same kind of charge capacity for about, you know, a, a sixth of the weight or whatever. Which, And at some point I'll do that, but, you know, I might as well use what I've got for now. So that can be part of the kit. Um, the uh, Duracell uh, Alkaline AA battery tray in the radio, part of the kit. That's part of the kit now. Um, I've got a little story to tell on that. And then there's the... Uh, rubber duck antenna for VHF, UHF, and I think it's also for six meters. So the, um, the, the rubber duck has got kind of got a, a section that unscrews from the top. And um, it's basically, I think it covers VHF, UHF and six meters, 50 megahertz, which is great. Um, and then carry strap that came with it, although I can't imagine ever using that. And the case, which is a bit battered, but perfectly usable, which I might use at some point. Um, when I'm traveling because it, it will, I guess it will protect it a little bit, but um, yeah, I might, I might use that. But that's basically the kit. Now, as for this battery pack, I bought this off eBay and it literally arrived two days later, but I originally ordered one. They're really cheap. They're like 15 quid. I, I ordered one from a company called Best Battery Biz. In fact, I think their website is bestbattery.biz or something like that. Um, and they said it was going to arrive within about a week and a week went by and it didn't arrive and then another 10 days went by and it hadn't arrived so eventually i contacted them and they sort of said oh well oh, I'm, I'm just looking into it and then some more days went past so in the end i just emailed them and just said look i've not used your company before i've ordered something it's nearly two weeks late the the communication has been zero basically this has been an, uh, an horrendous purchase experience with you and alarm bells are ringing in my head because you're not returning any of my messages anyway a guy called Ruben eventually contacted me and you know I basically wrote him a fairly shitty uh email um but polite but to the point and um he actually wrote back to me and sort of said okay yeah I, you know I'll, I'll look into it and then he wrote back to me wrote back to me again today and said I've had a look into it and we've lost your order um, so I've sent you another one with a tracking number and, and through Hermes and that's actually in, on the post in the post now so I've got another one coming but um, I wrote back to Ruben and said thanked him very much and told him he was a gentleman for sorting out what was a, a very uh, difficult purchase experience and that um, it's actions like that that make you want to use a company you know they get it wrong but they fix it I've got no issue with that at all. So, um, so you know, uh, best battery biz. I would recommend them because if they do get it wrong, um, they put it, they put, they put it right, which is great. So, uh, so there you go. So that's a kit. So, um, I think I, I definitely want to do a sked go portable. It's going to be a bit difficult with five watts, but um, I think most of the guys will be able to hear me, um, depending on my actual location, my final location. But 
I'm going to do that. Uh, so, uh, so there you go. So I've got nearly everything. All I actually need now is an antenna, a portable antenna, and I have got one. I've got, um, I've got one of those super antennas, uh, which I'm sure I might have showed you guys before. Um, problem with that was with five watts on, using the Elad, no one heard me uh, when I had it set up in the back garden. Um, so I'm not sure about that. I think that, that could be a bit of a red herring. But um, DX Commander and other similar companies make antennas that uh, that are completely portable. So uh, and maybe my friend Jeff and maybe my friend Tim might want to sort of get involved in that and we'll just go portable and do the sked from a hill somewhere one night um, would be fun. The, the trouble with going portable is it's only fun if anyone can actually hear you. That's the sort of fundamental rule, really. So uh, so we'll see. So there you go. So that's something that I'm going to be doing. Uh, something else that I'm doing this weekend, uh, I've already started actually, is I'm I'm running FT8 with my N-Fed wire for top band. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because I, I, f I feel intuitively uh, my bones are telling me that... Um, that that N fed wire is performing better than my G5RV. And um, I did a few tests uh, on single sideband and I was proven to be correct. My performance, the received performance of my N fed wire versus my G5RV is much better on single sideband um, uh, on 20 meters and 40 meters. So to kind of just reinforce that, I'm running FT8 um, and I've been running FT8 this afternoon, only probably for about an hour or so, maybe a bit longer, an hour and a half. Actually, I can probably look from here, 46 minutes. Anything longer than an hour? Um, I'm running 50 watts. And as you can see, I did this the other day, a couple of days ago and way down in Australia, but that's happened before. So here you go, 39 minutes ago, heard in Indonesia, uh, China, uh, is that Mongolia? No, it's just outside Mongolia. But anyway, you can see from the East Coast of the United States getting across into, I think that's New Mexico. So um, Iceland, uh, Northern Finland. So from what I've seen, and it's very preliminary, uh, that my NFED wire definitely is uh, performing better than the G5 RV uh, and that's and that's good going because it cost me less than five quid and the G5 RV costs 35 quid so, the, so that the antenna that is performing better than um, cost uh, seven times more um, so uh, that is the value that we like well that's the value that I like maybe I'm just tight so I just worked hotel alpha seven uh, Julia India Victor, can't, I haven't got my glasses on, I think that's right. So there you go. Um, yeah, I've said it before. It basically just, it just means that it's it, it's worth having an experiment with an antenna. You know, you can end up spending way less money and end up with, and end up with an antenna that works far better than uh, if you just like throw money at a problem. Now, there's nothing wrong with throwing money at a problem. Um, there's nothing wrong with throwing money at problems that don't really exist, such as I fancied. Uh, Icom 7300, but you know, here's the weird thing that you know, I, I, that was a 1200 pound radio, and uh, at the moment, I'm getting just as much enjoyment out of my 275 pound 817. Um, and once I've bought a little amplifier for that, 40 or 80 watts, um, yeah, uh, that, that's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, you know, it's uh, it's all good as uh, as far as I'm concerned, and um, you know, in the end, it's all sometimes. The greater challenge that the simpler, less sophisticated equipment brings is more fun than having loads of money um, and being able to just buy the best of everything. It's kind of like it's it's the reason why when I started doing this, uh, I went out into the field with you know reasonably good but relatively cheap portable radios and was you know and spent three or four years. Uh, copying DX that was way better than a lot of people sat at home with radios that were costing that cost thousands of pounds and sophisticated antenna systems and all the rest of it uh, and it, it, the same applies with I think with ham radio you know it's uh, yeah sure I'd love a DX 101 or whatever they are Yesu um, you know but it's like three and a half thousand quid and ultimately am I as a as a, as a ham radio operator 
going to get out any better than with my 7300 which costs about a third of the price probably not because i i don't even have enough experience to actually understand everything that that radio does and even even comparing me to someone that that that, that does you know it's forever diminishing returns you know if you spend 1200 quid on a radio you know you're going to get good performance you spend three grand on it or four grand on it you, you're going to get something a bit better but um you know it's not going to be you're not going to be heard three times more strongly just because the radio costs three times as much simple as that and uh you know i i like using the cheap stuff i'm just cheap you know i hate to say it but that is me i'm just i'm just a cheap a, a cheap skate at the end of the day um but nothing wrong with that and then uh, so there you go and then finally something really interesting actually um just bear with me while i log into yet another computer um there is Basically, there's a new station on shortwave, and I do need to put my glasses on now. There's a new station on shortwave, and and the frequency is um, four nine four zero kilohertz or there or thereabouts, and it's several DXs have heard it. I, I, I'm actually what I'm actually doing here is I'm I get sent this. This is shortwave bulletin. Um, which I get every, I think it's every couple of weeks, um, from Thomas Nilsson, uh, very well respected DXer. Oh, there's an ICR 75. Brilliant little radio, of course. Know it well. And um, yeah, there's a lot of talk because uh, on 4940 uh, kilohertz, uh, there's a new station which turns, which was suspected to be Colombian, and I think it's been confirmed basically uh, ident they, they identified themselves in English and Spanish the other night are uh, you listening to six, uh, 6010 uh, religious programming in, in the Colombian indigenous language which I'm assuming is Sp a dialect of Spanish, I don't know uh, La Voz de tu Conciencia uh, on a new frequency 4940 and it was corroborated by Rafael Rodriguez, who's in Bogota, um, uh, Venezuela. Um, and it's a new Martin Stendel missionary kind of project. Um, now, I don't know who Martin Stendel is, but most of these kind of tropical band uh, South American stations uh, are kind of religious based. Uh, or most of them are, at least, anyway. So um, so there is a new Colombian station on 4940. Now, there was a whisper that there was a, there, there's a couple of new stations on 4940, and they're, but they're only, and they're about, well, I think 20 hertz apart, they've been heard. But I think the voice of straight is also on 4940, so that they may be getting confused. But uh, anyway, I've tried listening to this station on 4940, and uh, basically, I can't hear it. Well, I haven't been able to hear it so far. Um, but in doing that, I um, I also I sort of I was tuning around and uh, I just I recorded um, some uh, stations using the FT eight one seven just as a bit of a giggle really. And uh, honestly, um, my wife already said it. What a brilliant little radio! So uh, so there you go. So I'm going to uh, if you've got any spare time and you've got an SDR, probably better with an SDR, but um, because I'm not sure the exact frequency. But um, if you but either but four nine forty, um, I guess I'm just trying to think of the grey line. Probably, probably not. Probably after midnight, I would have thought. Um, but um, I'm going to have a listen. And uh, you know, any of you DXers out there, if you hear that station, you'll be uh, you'll be one of a very select few because um, I, uh, three or four people appear to have heard it so far in uh, in Europe. Someone heard it very weakly from Spain. Um, I've not heard it. And um, and if any of you guys do hear it, uh, make sure you uh, send me a note on the channel and because uh, i'll be interested to know um so there you go another weekend in the shack um listen guys you know the situation covid situation in the uk is, just seems to be getting worse daily i i do hope we're not getting back to uh to where we were previously um you know let's everyone sort of keep safe be sensible and uh you know stay at home if you can uh, listen to the radio or just stay at home and watch your antennas blow over because I think that's what I'm going to be doing this afternoon um, you know but, uh, let, let's hope that we can get over this kind of second wave of the pandemic and uh, eventually life will get back to normal that's what I'd like but uh, so there you go anyway I've rambled on far too long now that's 25 minutes I, I don't even script this but uh, maybe that's obvious because a lot of it's just waffle but uh, everybody I wish you a good DX keep safe 
have a great weekend and uh, I'll uh, no doubt speak to some of you on the comments on the channel. Take care, 73s.